Hi, everyone. Oh my gosh, there are so many people logging in. We are so excited to see all of you. Welcome to the Bandana Cow Knit Along. Yay! All right, we're going to give people just a couple minutes to log in. We are expecting a pretty big group tonight for our Zoom in it. Um, while we're waiting, this is always so much fun. Go ahead and let us know in the chat where you're joining us from. Uh, see who's who's coming from the furthest distance. California, Seattle, St. Paul, Minnesota. Oswego, Illinois. Oh, lots of answers. Connecticut. Wilton, Connecticut. Oh, they're coming I'm in fast to you. Now. Hi. <laughs> awesome. All right. Also, just for fun, while we can all see each other, um, raise your hand if you have your yarn and you're ready to cast on today on cast on day. Yeah. Oh, I see a cast on. Awesome. All right. Raise your hand if you already cast it on. I see a couple. Raise your hand if you already finished your first cowl or more. <laughs> I know there are at least a couple of you. I've seen finished cowls all over Instagram. I have mm -hmm. two right here. I think uh, Gianna, one of our moderators has a big stack, lots oh of cowls. <laughs> Awesome. It's raining cows. I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we're getting close to, I think we've got most of the people here. People are going to keep joining throughout the meeting. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to our first Zoom and Knit for the Bandana Cowl Knit Along. Um, if you're new to a Pearl Soho Knit Along, my name is Juliana. I'm the Social Media and Outreach Coordinator at Pearl Soho. Um, my co-host today is Jaja, our Customer Service Manager. And we're also joined by Margaret and Jess from our Customer Service Team and Gianna from our Design Team. Yes, um, like Gina and I said, this is the first Zoom in it for the bandana cow, um, but this is actually our second knit along. Um, don't, some people, I'm not, I feel like we've gotten some messages from people that were in the last one, but even if you weren't there, we're excited for everyone that's joining this one. Um, I feel like the turnout's already higher than we expected. <laughs> so Absolutely, really we're, yeah, like we've seen so much like enthusiasm and excitement on Instagram in our email inboxes, uh, and we are just as excited as you are. And it's been really nice to see plenty just getting love and attention. I know Jess works at the warehouse and she was mentioning how much more is getting pulled now, and that's really fun to see. Yeah, I think we're going to see all different colors and all different color combinations in these bandana cowls, which is really, really exciting. And then definitely a big thing that is different between this knit along and the last one is this one is going to take six weeks, whereas the last one took about seven months. So there's a lot less commitment um, than a whole sweater. And also I feel like tis the season and a lot of people have been making this for gifts. It's so easy to do it. Um, and there are so many variations that we have now because this pattern's been out for a while and we've redone it a few times, but the, this is the first time I think it's been done in a Pearl Soho yarn. And I um, wanted to talk about the four different designs we have. Well, technically there's five because there's the original solid. We also have- Oh, Jaja, go ahead and go ahead and spotlight yourself so we can see oh, yes, all these that makes variations. Sense. <laughs> that makes it easier, the spotlight. There you go. And now I can make sure it's in the screen. Um, let me just change the view too. Sorry, one second, first speaker. Okay, um, but we have the solid that's on the website and the color block one, which is just the two stripes, the bread stripe, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, the transitional stripes, which is just a lot more subtle. And then the one with the monograms. Uh, we were laughing yeah. about this on the inside because I feel like there are a number of people, so I didn't feel so bad. They didn't know what a Breton stripe was. Um, even even some members of the design team didn't know what a Breton stripe was until we yeah. started writing up the patterns. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone's curious, I looked it up and it started for um, French Navy uniforms, just that quintessential, really thick stripes. And eventually that was converted into 
a nautical collection by a French fashion designer. And it's used all over today. So it's just really funny to see how fashions evolved and now we're using it in our cowl and long way. We're using it in the cowl. Um, so I definitely want to make one of those down the line. Yeah, um, I'm just going to throw in real quick here because I see some, we're already getting some questions in the chat. Please do continue to ask questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. We may not answer them immediately. We are, if uh, if we can, we will answer questions right away while we're talking. Mm -hmm. um, if we're not able to, we will also be saving um, questions for a Q&A session at the end. Um, one of our moderators is going to be saving those questions uh, in a Google Doc. So we're not ignoring you. We will get to your question. Just wanted to throw that out there, but also to I invite you to continue asking questions because we mm -hmm. want to answer them all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the all the stripes are so fun. Um, and the question that somebody just asked, I will answer real quick. They wanted to know, will it work if I want to stripe the whole thing, excluding the border? Um, I only purchased two skeins. So first of all, I will say with two skeins, you can make two cowls. This is a one skein project. Even if you're doing something like the uh, transitional stripe, the color block, you could reverse the colors and still have enough for two cowls totally. Now, as for striping the whole thing, I'm going to give you a probably, but it is not in the pattern. And what complicates it is that you would be striping while doing short rows. It's not impossible. It is absolutely possible. Um, however, it's not in the pattern. We're actually going to be doing some experimentation and discussing that even more in depth in our next Zoom in it. Um, if you do want to go somewhere for like a little how-to or, or some tips on how to do that, our striped triangle garter wrap pattern has stripes and short rows at the same time, which is kind of what we're going to be using for reference. So that's just a little sneak peek as to what's coming up later in the knit along, if you want to give it a try yourself. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Oh, we've got, we've got so many ideas. <laughs> we're having so much fun with this. Um, one of my favorite things about this cowl is how quick it is to knit. I am not a particularly fast knitter. I would say I'm like, a little faster than average, um, but I can make a whole bandana cowl in six or seven hours, um, start to finish. Um, so that really is one of the great things that can be done, like in terms of gift knitting, last minute stuff, you can really bang these things out. Um, also, uh, I find it very easy to memorize this pattern once you've made one. And especially like once you get going, once you do that first two short rows, it is so easy to memorize the pattern. Um, I've talked to several coworkers, including Gianna, as you saw, who are just having so much fun whipping out cowl after cowl and stashing them away for any sort of future gifting occasions. They're just like super fun and satisfying to make. Mm -hmm. So, um, and just for reference too, I, I have to go a little slower, slower myself for needing. And I know we get a lot of questions about ergonomic meaning if you have, arthritis or something like that. So for reference, it actually took me about five to seven days, so almost a week um, to go really slowly, but I was still able to knock out a project pretty fast, which for me is fast. Um, and today we're gonna talk about a few things. We're not gonna jam pack it as much um, because we're gonna leave that second episode, episode <laughs> the second meeting <laughs> for the modification. Our show, our is, episodes yeah. of our show. <laughs> exactly, I wish. <laughs> just so you know, for the agenda and what to expect for today, the first thing we're gonna really focus on are yarn choices, starting with plenty and really focusing on why we think this is the best yarn for this project. And we're also gonna talk about weight and other substitutions you can make. We actually went ahead and swatched all of these just because we were curious and really wanted to give you an informed like just decision as you're making it in case you want to do something else. Um, but after we're talking about yarn choices and weights, we're going to talk about gauge. We needed to make sure these substitutions could meet gauge. Um, we're going to talk about joining in the round. Um, something simple, but if you haven't done it before, it can be intimidating and it's nice to just have that ready to go. And finally, the S2KP. I want to make sure I'm saying that one right, just because it's a tongue twister. But we'll be going over that little step for the, um, right here. I just wanted to show you in advance for that tip of the triangle in order to get it triangular, that decrease. And of course, um, like Julia mentioned before, we're going to be keeping an eye out on the questions. We'll have a Q&A session at the end. But if there's anything we don't get to, you think about later, we're always happy to answer you over email or we can be reached almost <laughs> anywhere. Instagram, email is probably the best way to contact us though at customer service. 
at prosoho.com or knit along at prosoho.com. Yes. Um, and after we get uh, everybody's questions answered during the meeting today, we will have some time for show and tell if you want to um, join us on screen and tell us your plans for the knit along, um, show us the yarn you have, show us your cast on, maybe you've finished your cowl already, we want to see everything. Um, also, just as a reminder, we are recording this Zoom in it to make it available later for people who couldn't join us live. If you don't wish to be recorded, you can always turn off your camera and mic. So... Let's go ahead and get started. Um, Margaret, if you could join us on screen and we're gonna switch over to our cameras to show you our swatches up close and personal. All right. Um, so the first thing we are gonna talk about is plenty. Um, we've got a couple, uh, of uh, options here. I went ahead and knit a swatch because of course I chose some really dark colors for my cowl so you can't really see the gauge. Um, but this is plenty in ash gray right here. Um, so um, it's really a nice yarn. Um, Jaja, do you wanna go into a little more detail about um, plenty itself? I would love to. So this isn't mentioned on the website because uh, that's not working. But um, just between all of us, it's made out of 17.5 micron merino, um, which makes it really fine. And the micron is the lowest available on the market. And just so you know, in case you're not familiar, a uh, micron or micrometer is the measurement for measuring the diameter of a single fiber. Um, the lower micron, the softer it is. And so when you have, have something that's, I feel like merino wool is made, has the softest, um, micron count but it's I, I read today than, like, normal for, like, yeah I, I read today that the lowest recorded micron for merino is 10 and that's only been recorded once off of one particular sheet oh <laughs> um it, it was in so that like the the range of micron is generally given as 10 being the lowest but that's only been actually scientifically found one time so um oh you know 17.5 counts as like an extra fine or super fine merino mm -hmm. um yeah do you have do you happen to have sorry to put you on the spot like an average of what a normal merino tends to be because i know this is um oh god like well 20, i wish I, I feel like i saw it was 21 i think that average. sounds about right i wish i'd kept that um <laughs> the uh the chart open the chart however i i don't remember the averages unfortunately but the bottom of the chart was 17 and a half and under so in terms gotcha. of like how merinos are ranked we're at the the merino we're using for plenty is the softest that's really commercially available mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I just want to mention about the, I saw a comment that said I found it hilarious. They were geeking out on the Merino oh, Micron. This is oh, funny. We, we our, uh, yeah. our whole lives are geeking out about yarn and we're happy to geek out about it with you. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> um, somebody also just asked, where do you see Micron measurements on a store-bought scheme? You usually do not. That is yeah. um, not common information to to see on yarn um interestingly it's a little more common if you're buying like merino clothes which would be you know uh a mm. fabric made from like a machine woven or machine knit uh fabric um but most of the time you are not going to see micron counts on yarn um and I'm not really sure. I unfortunately I don't have a um answer as to why I wish I did um but yeah, it, that's a really interesting question. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, we'll have to do some research and see what the micron counts on our other Merino yarns are. Mm -hmm. um, but talking about the plies, another thing is the high twist. Actually, I'm gonna grab real quick if you don't mind. Or I was just gonna grab, you, I have a ball of it. Do you right have the here. worsted Actually, twist? Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah well, let me show you. So I have um, worsted twist. Unfortunately, my skein's kind of dark, but I think you'll be able to see up close. Um, so this right here is worsted twist, which is a two ply yarn. If you look, sorry, it's dark, but um, mm -hmm. if you look closely, you can see how it's got like more texture. There we go. It just came into focus. So this is a two ply worsted twist right here compared to um, I have plenty. plenty on my screen. Yeah, that's like really just pulled it apart. There's, I think there's 12 plies when I counted right. once, so if you really pull it, pull it apart. Yeah. 
Um, and it's really interesting. So like what that does, this actual yarn construction, also the individual plies of plenty are spun much tighter. Um, and this really does a lot of different things for the yarn. Um, one, the first thing you'll probably notice with plenty is it's like bouncy. It's like so super squishy. So <laughs> first and twist is squishy too in a nice way, but plenty has like this really extra like cush factor. Um, and then even better, the other thing that these multiple plies that are quite tightly twisted does is it makes it so plenty does not pill. Um, all mm -hmm. yarns may pill a little bit. Plenty is far less likely to pill than most wools. Those multiple plies, that tight twist, sort of lock the individual fibers into the yarn. Mm -hmm. So uh, because what happens with pilling is as you're rubbing the surface of the yarn, little individual fibers kind of pull out and get tangled together and make the little pills. When you have these really tight multiple plies, they're really locked in, not very much is sticking out. So you're not going to get that same level of pilling. It's a really, for how soft it is, an incredibly sturdy and durable yarn. Sorry, I had to step away for one moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's a really, um, like, we worked hard. Like, we just kind of want to, we want to let everybody know that, like, we worked really hard on this yarn. This is a yarn that went through a very long development process. And mm -hmm. it can be so hard to look at a skein of yarn on a computer screen and be able to see these qualities that are, um, we love it. And we're so proud of it. Uh, and you may just look at it online and be like, oh, that looks like a nice yarn. We worked really hard to make yeah. this, like, an objectively nice yarn I guess is what we mm -hmm. want to say <laughs> yeah and just I feel like just that quintessential just heavy worsted it's not just the worsted I feel like it's on the heavier end almost borderline bulky but that's just it does count as a worsted it's just because of the way it just fluffs up after you work with it it's just so yeah wonderful. it's really fun um but we do of course you know we love plenty we hope you try it. We hope you love it as much as we do. But of course we get questions about alternate yarns. So we just wanted to show you some of our other yarns that we have swatched to let you know that yes, they will work if you're looking for something different because you know, not everything is for everyone. We totally understand that. Um, the first two I'm gonna show you are um, Compo and Worsted Twist. If I can, oh, here's my Worsted Twist swatch. Um, so these are also worsted weight yarns. Um, Compo is a blend of 50% wool, 50% cotton. What it really has going for it is that it is machine wash and dryable. So mm -hmm. if you are making bandana cowls for kids, <laughs> for uh, friends or relatives who you're not entirely confident will remember to keep it out of their laundry basket when they do their laundry, um, Compo is a great option. Now I will say, so this swatch, um, I hand washed it and then I put it through the dryer. Um, it's actually not the right gauge. I got 15 stitches to four inches. It's supposed to be 16. However, I did this on a 10. I'm very confident that on a nine, this would be correct. Um, and I mean, that's something that's why we swatch, right? Like I did get the correct gauge with plenty on a 10. Compo came out a little big, but just feeling it like it would be great. It would have plenty of body and movement on a nine. So if I um, I do have a couple schemes of this that I'm planning to use um, for a few friends who maybe uh, aren't at a place in their life where they can hand wash something all the time. Um, and I will be using a nine. Um, Another option is Worsted Twist. This is a classic Pearl Soho yarn. I did get exactly the right gauge with um, Worsted Twist, 16 stitches to four inches. Um, however, you can see it's it's kind of a different fabric. I know this is a marled color, which is obscuring it a little bit. Plenty is like a solid, much, much more solid fabric. At this correct gauge, the Worsted Twist is a much lighter fabric. It almost has maybe not sheer, but you can see some gaps between the stitches. Um, so it's not quite as, doesn't have quite the same body as um, Plenty, but it's still another great option if you wanted something a little bit lighter weight. Mm -hmm. And kind of going off of combo, I'm going to talk about Sun Shower Cotton next. It's, we get a lot of questions all the time um, about um, a non-wool option. And so we really wrapped our heads for this because we didn't have anything completely 100% wool that was close to this gauge, but we went ahead and tried it. And I was really surprised by how it turned out. This one has a lot more, it almost has this hand painted 
effect, which is really cool, but also can look a little funny sometimes if you're working a certain pattern, which is why I tried it with the border of the garter stitch and the stockinette, because that's basically what the cowl looks like anyway. And I was really surprised that I was able to get 16 stitches per inch, both before and after blocking. So if you do want 100% um, cotton or a non-wool yarn, you can totally try sunshower cotton. Um, the biggest thing I would mention though, is that the body is not nearly as dense as plenty. And so it's a little more limp. It probably wouldn't hold up around the neck as well. But if you like more of a slouchy style, I think it would be a really nice alternative. Yeah. And then tulip All right, and then I think, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Mar <laughs> Margaret has a couple of swatches to show us as well. Um, and this turned out really interesting. Um, so Margaret, tell us about uh, your experience with uh, tulip cotton. Yeah, so hi everybody. I had um, I did two swatches in tulip cotton, one on a size nine needle and then one on a size eight. And with the size eight needle even, I still wasn't able to get gauge, either row gauge or stitch gauge. However, I do think it is possible to go maybe down one more size potentially, but this is gonna be a very slouchy shawl or cowl, I mean. It's not gonna be um, as structured as Plenty is, but it would be a nice cotton option. It just would be a little difficult to achieve gauge with, so. Yeah, but I, I think yeah. that's a really good um, lesson in why we swatch, right? So these Absolutely. are all these, all these yarns that we're using that we're talking about are worsted weight. They're all classified as like, you know, size four. If you're looking at a size four, sun shower cotton actually might be closer to a DK to worsted, but we're getting drastically different results on different um, sizes of needles. So, you know, it's important to make a swatch, even if you're using the correct yarn, it is incredibly important to make a swatch if you are substituting a yarn, even if it says it's worsted weight, uh, even if you're pretty sure it's gonna work, you really should make a swatch. Um, and then we had, uh, uh, Margaret has one more or two more. Do you have one more or two more to show us? Oh, one more, oh, two so, more, two more. That's right. <laughs> two more. Yes. <laughs> All right, so, so let's talk about partridge first. Partridge is also 100% merino wool. And this is a great option to use instead of plenty for a little bit more of a drapey cowl. I was able to get a stitch gauge with this. It's a little bit dark, but you can kind of see how it's nice and fluffy. Um, I did two swatches with this as well, one on size nine and size 10, and I was able to get stitch gauge on size nine. And then my other swatch that I did was with Lovebird, which is a very fun, colorful, bulky yarn. This, all, all um, three yarns that I used, I did the same amount of stitches each time, 24 stitches when I cast on. You can see that this is just way too big for this gauge. While it would be really fun, you'd have to modify the pattern to work with Lovebird, so. Mm -hmm. But good to include to show why we gauge swatch. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. All right, um, we're going to go a little bit further in depth. Um, I just saw somebody ask um, about, you know, how do you make a gauge swatch? We have a whole tutorial called All About Gauge. Um, Gianna's going to put a link to that in the chat now. The All About Gauge tutorial tells you how many to cast on, how to knit your gauge swatch, how to measure it, how to block it. It is full of really good information. Um, just kind of in brief, however, um, one thing to point out for the bandana cowl specifically, the cowl itself uses essentially the entire skein of plenty, which means it's really important to get the correct gauge. If your gauge is off, you will run out of yarn, um, besides it being the wrong size. That also means you must reuse your gauge swatch. So you have to knit the gauge swatch, but you also have to unravel it to use in your cowl. Um, this kind of brings up a couple of questions like, should I actually block it? Should I not? Um, this is my blocked plenty um, swatch. And then you can obviously, this one is, is unblocked because <laughs> it's really kind of uh, curly and wild. Um, so my blocked one, I have exactly um, 16 stitches per four inches. Um, my unblocked one, I'm just gonna show you. So when you're, um, counting your gauge, you're just going to take, you know, um, I mean, I'm using our brass needle gauge because I have one and I love it, um, but you can use really just about any um, 
like a ruler of some sort that's flat. You can use a soft ruler, but personally, I prefer to use a hard ruler because it's easier. It kind of holds the, um, the swatch down for you. And you're just going to, as best you can, line your straight edge up with one row of stitches. Yeah, I can't show you. It's too curly. I'm going to show you on here uh, just because my unblocked swatch is too curly. So you line up as best you can with one row of stitches, and then you count each V in that four inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and a half. Um, this is still a little damp when it's totally dry. It is 16. Um, and one concern people often have with reusing their swatches is when you go to reuse it, whether it's been blocked or not, your yarn is going to be pretty curly. Like this is something that, you know, I've knitted, it hasn't blocked, it's not too bad. Um, this is just a sample of something that yeah. I knitted and blocked and you can see it's like yarn spaghetti. Um, you can absolutely steam your yarn. Oh, the gauge after blocking, somebody just asked. So this is the gauge after blocking, which is just about exactly, I think I got 15 and three quarters. You can see like that line right there is right at 15 and three quarters. So I knit a little loosely on this one. Um, this is my pre-blocking gauge done with the exact same needles. And I'll just count real quick so we know the difference between the two, because it is always interesting to find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you can see I got 16 stitches to four inches pre-blocking, about 15 and three quarters after blocking. So it grew ever so slightly. That's a really good example, however, of why you want to block your gauge swatch. Now, a quarter of a stitch over four inches is not really critical. I would go ahead and start if yeah. I was that close. Um, now, but it can often, depending on the yarn you're using, can have a much larger difference between your pre and post block gauge. So we do really recommend for this project because the yardage is so close, you do need to do your gauge swatch. You do need to block your gauge swatch but then you have to reuse your yarn. So when you unravel your yarn and it looks like yarn spaghetti, one option is to steam it. Um, and to do that, you're just gonna sort of, you can, it's such a small amount of yarn in a gauge swatch. I don't think you necessarily need to like make it into a new skein. I would just sort of, as you're unraveling it, use your iron set on like a high steam blast and very gently steam it. Don't touch it with the iron, obviously, just sort of hold the iron right over it. It will relax all those wrinkles right out if it's really bothering you. Another option is to simply roll it back into a ball and let it sit for a day. And it, again, just letting it sit for a day in a ball will significantly reduce the wrinkling. Option C, which is what I usually do, is to just go ahead and knit with it. Um, and lots of people don't like to do this because it does make your knitting look a little different. Like you'll see a difference between the yarn that's been reused and the yarn that is fresh. You'll see a slight line in your knitting. Your stitches will look a little more uneven. Um, the good news is when you block the entire project, for most yarns, it will turn out all the same. So you just kind of have to let go of looking at that while you're knitting and seeing, you know, the, the more uneven stitches and the less even stitches, just let that go. And just remember when you're knitting or when you block the whole thing, it's going to turn out fine. Um, another thing to, um, you know, sort of think about when you're doing this um, is whether you should uh, knit your swatch flat or in the round. Um, this pattern actually uses both gauges. Um, when you're knitting the cowl, just sort of the general construction, I just saw somebody mention in the chat that you start from the bottom up. So um, this border right here is worked in the round. This entire point is done with short rows, which means you're going back and forth. So this is gonna be your um, knit flat gauge right here. When you finish that, when you get to the top here, you finish that point at the top, this section is again knit in the round. So this is going to be your round gauge. It is extremely common. Most people knit and purl at different rates. Um, so it is possible, perhaps likely, that you're going to have a slightly different gauge between um, the knit flat section and the knit round section. So whether or not you should do two gauge swatches is really up to you. You have the option of doing two gauge swatches and determining which 
size you think is more accurate to the um, pattern um, and using that as your, your decision for how to, which size needle to use. I personally just do my swatch flat for this project um, because it is such a small project that it's not critical. If this was a sweater where, you know, it has to fit all different parts of your body, that's when you'd want to be doing two different gauge swatches, really taking your time, really being careful. Um, for this cowl, I think all of us on the customer service and design teams probably just did one swatch. You just did one swatch, right, Jaja? Oh, I'm going to admit, I didn't do a cape swatch when I did, when I did my first one. <laughs> And oh, I just no. kind of measured, I did it. And you know what happened? I, I ran out of yarn. And so <laughs> I had to adjust and knit one less round. Um, yeah, one less round towards the end. So don't be like me. <laughs> do do as we say not as we do I mean, exactly <laughs> i do think um i think my very first bandana cowl before we were doing this knit along this was mm -hmm. oh gosh probably like six or seven years ago i think i knit a bandana cowl um i did not do a gauge swatch for that particular bandana cowl six or seven years ago mm -hmm. um and again it's a small project if you can accept the possibility that you may have to start over, you can go ahead and start it without the gauge mm -hmm. swatch. I just really recommend, you know, maybe when you're partway through the point, checking your gauge before going too much further to see, make sure you're at least close, you're at least mm -hmm. sort of on track, um, or else you may have to make some modifications or start over. So mm -hmm. just some things to keep in mind. It's, it's you know, Obviously, everybody can do whatever they want. We really recommend gauge swatching for this project. <laughs> yes. Just because it is such a one skein wonder, I'm a little bit of a daredevil. So part of me was just challenging myself of just, let's see, <laughs> let's play yarn chicken. And I lost. Don't lose yarn <laughs> chicken. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about joining in the round. This is a question we get um, reasonably often, I'd say. Like, so you're following along your pattern. Your pattern says, cast on 84 stitches. Sorry if I can get this to um, focus. Your pattern says cast on 84 stitches and then it says join in the round. What does that mean when it says join in the round? Essentially all it means is to just start knitting. Um, you may see um, some guides online that have you do something like cast on an extra stitch and then knit the first and last stitch together or pass the last stitch over. Oh, somebody just correct me, 89 stitches. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so 89 Realize stitches. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So you're going to cast on 89 stitches. What do you do when it comes to uh, knitting in the round? All you're going to do is knit into the first stitch that you cast on. So this is the first stitch of the cast on. This one over here with the yarn attached is the last stitch. I'm going to flip this over so that the needle with the first stitch is in my left hand. The needle with the yarn attached is in my right hand. Very important. Make sure your stitches are not twisted anywhere around the needle. You can see I have like a little wobble right here in my stitches, but it's not actually a true twist. It kind of unwobbles over here. Um, our last project, the lightweight raglan pullover, we went into so much detail about how not to twist your cast on because it started with around mm -hmm. 300 stitches. It's a little less scary with 89 stitches on a 16 yes. inch needle. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty easy to see, especially if you're using a 16 inch needle. I usually like to sort of set it down on a table and just take a quick look and sort of trace with my finger and make sure that cast on edge is all facing the same direction. Once you verify that, you're gonna pick it up and simply insert your needle into that first stitch that you cast it on. Make sure you don't grab the short end of your yarn and just, start knitting. Um, somebody asked what needles um, I'm using. These are Addy lace needles, which we used to carry. I don't believe we do anymore, or they may be discontinued. I'm not entirely sure. Um, if you're looking for something similar, we carry Addy rocket needles, which have the exact same um, tip, the exact same uh, sharpness of the tip, um, but they are a silver color instead of a gold color. And that's it. That is really all you have to do for joining in the round. There will oh, be, sorry. I'm going to start. Somebody just had a really good question. Are you adding a marker? <laughs> I, I, I sure should have. I, yeah, I sure should have. <laughs> I had a marker right here on my desk and I just forgot. I really like to use um, removable markers because yes. I forget a lot. And you can just 
pop that right yeah, in there. It to me all the time too. So I'm so glad. Constantly. <laughs> I missed it. Constantly forget to add my marker. The good news is, and what I was just going to point out, when you've only done one row, there's just one strand of yarn connecting the first and last stitches. So you can actually just sort of keep an eye on where that first, um, that, that mark or that point where your marker should be is if you forget to put one in, or you can just add one as you join, which you probably should do. Cause I think that's <laughs> probably the right way to do things. Sorry, I'm going to stop you one more time. This is silly, but someone's asking if the, the first round is purled. Um, it might help to actually, just since we're demonstrating it, to maybe show how to correct that. Absolutely. I can <laughs> show, show how to how do to the curl. same thing with curling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to undo those two stitches. So same thing. Um, I will leave my marker in where it's supposed to be this time. So let's start over. You're going to have your cast on stitches. You verify that they're not twisted. You slip your marker onto your right hand needle. So it's just hanging out. Now you do have to, if you're purling, kind of put your yarn in the front. If you, you know, you're already familiar with uh, doing ribbing, how you have your yarn in the back to knit, your yarn in the front to purl. When you're purling the first stitch of your cast on, same thing, your yarn does have to be in the front and you're just gonna insert your needle into that first stitch purl wise and purl that first stitch and then continue purling around. All right, hope that's, Help. I'm just moving my yarn to the back so you can see what those stitches look like. All right. And so um, another um, question. So we recommend doing this on a 16 inch circular needle. Um, and the reason is that it's really just almost exactly the size of the cowl. You can see how nicely this cast on like fits mm -hmm. around this 16 inch circular needle. I have already seen some people on Instagram using magic loop. For this you can totally knit it using magic loop if that is a method that you enjoy um and but really like it's totally up to you so a 16 inch circular needle is what we recommend if you're going to do magic loop you're going to need a 32 or even a 40 inch needle um for working this in the round but that is how to join in the round all right and now we're going to do a quick demonstration of that S2KP. Um, and this is, uh, so just so you know, when you're doing the pattern, I'll see if I can show right here. This is that S2KP. And S2KP is a centered double decrease. Um, and what that means, centered means that it doesn't lean either to the right or to the left. Um, a um, you know, if you think of like a knit two together or a slip slip knit, if you're familiar with either of those decreases, and actually if it's not too dark, we can see back here. Um, this is a, if it's leaning to the right, that is a uh, SSK. These are my SSKs right here. You can see they're leaning to the right. No, I take it back. Those are knit two together. So those are knit two together is leaning this direction. These are my SSKs over here. And you can see they have a definite lean. You can see those two pretty lines of decreases in the back of the cowl. The um, S2KP, on the other hand, is centered. It leans neither to the right or to the left. Um, it just stays right in a straight line. Um, and then by double decrease, that means it gets rid of two stitches at once. So we're going to show how to do that. Um, and again, we do have a tutorial for this. Um, it is a video tutorial. So if you want to watch it again a little slower, um, you can watch that tutorial at any time, um, but we're going to go over it now, just anyway, just in case. So yeah, as you're doing one of the this first weird techniques you have to do, it is, you do it almost immediately. So you, um, I believe you do it in the first round in the middle of, uh, or no, you purl the first round. It's round two. You use it for the first time. round two. You use it in round two, you knit 43, and then you do an S2KP. So we're going to imagine that I knitted 43 over here. I'm going to take out one more just so I have a little bit of extra room. So to do the S2KP, you start by putting your needle into these two stitches as if you were doing a knit two together. So what that means is I'm going to skip over to the second stitch on the needle and insert my needle into two stitches at once knit wise. This looks a lot like doing a knit two together at this point, but instead of completing a knit two together, you just slip those two stitches over to the right hand needle. Then you're going to knit the following stitch. And then finally, you grab those two slipped stitches with your left hand needle, pass them over the knitted stitch, 
and off the needle. And that makes your pretty little S2KP. It looks a little hidden right here in this garter stitch. Um, but as those stack up, that's gonna give you this line that creates the nice sharp point at the bottom of your bandana cowl. All right. Um, and then after that, so you're going to do these stacked S2KPs and then the pattern immediately goes into short rows. Um, this is probably my favorite pattern for teaching somebody how to do short rows, because mm -hmm. by the time you're done, you are an expert. You start immediately, you do them one after another, after another, and you just, you get to the end and you can do a short row in your sleep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, Oh, somebody just asked, can you do the S2KP one more time? So I'm just going to demonstrate yeah. that one more time, and then we'll get back to talking about um, the short rows. But as we mentioned, there is, we have a full video tutorial dedicated to just the S2KP. So please feel free to check that out at any time and follow along. But if you want to follow along again now, so you're going to knit to the point in the pattern where it says to do your S2KP. You're going to insert your right hand needle into two stitches at once as if you were knitting, as if you were doing a knit two together. Yeah. You're gonna- This is the S2 part. I've, this is the S2, me, slip two. Just to like yes. break it down for people. <laughs> that is that is a really good point. Like when I'm following these weird abbreviations, it does really help me to know what the abbreviation actually means. So this is the S2, slip two. So you've got your right hand needle and two stitches at once, slip them over to the right hand needle without doing anything. Then you're gonna knit the following stitch. So that's the S2K stands for knit, mm -hmm. S2K P, P stands for pass. You're going to grab those two slipped stitches that you have moved over and you're going to, ah, sorry, I did this very tightly. You're going to grab those two slipped stitches, pass them over the knit stitch and drop them off the needle. Someone and that's the pass hair. part. Someone had a good question about if you do the S2KP the same way on the opposite side when you're doing the pearl side. And yes, um, you are gonna be still be doing that because um, they're asking to slip two as if to knit and then knit the next or pearl these. You're still gonna knit these. Yeah, so and this point in the pattern, and, and that's a good question, and I totally see why that's a little confusing. But remember, at this point in the pattern, you're working in the round. So you always have that right side facing you. So, you know, you're going to knit over, do your S2KP, go back around. When you're purling the next row, you're still going the same direction. You still have the right side facing you. So they're still going to stack up the same way. If you were, um, for some reason, doing this flat, um, then you would have to, in some way, reverse that S2KP. Um, however, for this pattern, the way we do this cowl in the round, you don't have to reverse it. You are going to work the S2KP the same, no matter whether you're doing a knit row or a purl row in that border, because you always have the right side facing you. Yeah. Oh, somebody just said, just remember to bring your <laughs> yarn to the back if you're on a purl row. Excellent point. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you do have to put your yarn in the back before doing the S2KP, if you're in the middle mm -hmm. of a pearl row. All right. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about these short rows. Again, we have full tutorials. Um, this pattern includes instructions for both wrap and turn short rows and German short rows. Um, they are both wonderful ways to work short rows. They are both equally great options. Um, and it's really a matter of personal preference, which one you want to use. In fact, I used one of each. For my first cowl, I used regular wrap and turn short rows. For my second one, I used German short rows. Um, this could be actually a wonderful project even to figure out which one you like better because it's quick, it's fast, you're gonna do a lot of them. So um, I do wanna go over, somebody just asked, is there a difference between how the two short row types look? Excellent question, not really. Uh, this is, uh, I'll subtle. hold this up so you can get a closer look. This is the um, German short row right here. You can see all along, try to get this to focus a little better. Um, this first row of stitches right here, all along above this garter stitch edge, each of these stitches is a German short row. Um, they look almost seamless. You can't really tell. There's like a slight maybe tilt right there. That's the German short row right there. Um, now, if I hold up the other one, same thing. And also keep in mind, this has not been blocked. 
this has been blocked. Um, again, right here, right above the edge of that um, garter stitch are the regular wrap and turn short rows. To my eye, and I'm sorry, these um, colors are so dark. The wrap and turn short rows has a little bit less of a lean. When you look at those German short rows, I'm able to point out how they have a little like sort of bump or lean at the bottom. Um, so, but it's extremely subtle. It is not something that most people would be able to see or point out in a normal situation. Um, so it's entirely up to you. Most people consider German short rows to be easier, I would say. Um, most people that we hear from prefer German short rows. Um, I probably also prefer German short rows. Uh, how do you feel, Shasha? I like, I like regular short rows. I think when I was learning socks, I remembered experimenting with both and I, it was intimidating, but I, I really like short rows actually. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, so short rows, wrap and turn. Wrap and They're all short, short rows. rows. I like the it wrap and really, turns. It really is personal preference. I think we hear from more people who prefer German short rows, but that doesn't mean there aren't people who prefer wrap and turn short rows. Um, there are, this cowl is not one of these situations, but there are a few very specific situations where you can only do wrap and turn short rows. Um, I have seen patterns where you kind of stack the short rows, like you wrap the same stitch twice. You can't do that with German short rows. You can only do that with wrap and turn short rows. Um, but otherwise, almost every other pattern, I've only seen a few patterns like that. Almost every pattern, you can use whichever one you like. Um, our pattern for the bandana cowl includes both options. Um, and there is a link to get to both tutorials in the pattern. Um, and also in the chat, Gianna just put that there for you. Um, I did see somebody had a question about what is row six. So I do want to cover which part of the pattern to read, um, depending on where you are, uh, which, which, uh, method of short rows you're using. Um, so this beginning of the cowl, the, uh, garter stitch, the S2KP is the same. You, that you follow no matter which version of the cowl you are doing. Um, now, when it says work mandana point, the first section says if using wrap and turn short rows. The second section says if using German short rows. You're essentially going to pick one or the other. So if you do the wrap and turn short rows, skip the German short row section or vice versa. After completing either of those, the next section of the pattern says decrease to top, and that is again the same. So that's where you finished your short rows right here and you're going to work to the top, it is the same no matter which version of the pattern you chose to knit. Um, but yeah, so that's just sort of a little roadmap of how to read the pattern depending on which short row you're doing. Um, another just common question we get, I just wanna say real quick because we hear about this a lot. Um, one sort of downside of the wrap and turn short rows is when you do your final short row, which is right here at the top of this point on the back of the cowl, many people find that they get a hole between the final two short rows because you end up doing two short rows right next to each other and you have to then resolve them on the next row. Um, we get lots of questions about this. Lots of people write in and say, there's a hole, what do I do? And our mm. response is usually, don't worry about it. <laughs> So I wanted to point out why you don't have to worry about it. Um, this right here, I did not do anything special. This is my um, wrap and turn short row version. If I hold it up, you can see there's a hole. If I push my finger through the hole so that you can see it, there's a very slight hole. However, blocking almost completely, like when it's worn, even when it's just flat on a table, this is like the magic of blocking that hole really like closed up and disappeared. Um, so lots of people consider that sort of a downside of the wrap and turn short rows. The um, German short row cowl, I have not blocked at all and there is no hole. That's just not something that happens with the German short rows. Um, so if that hole really bothers you, maybe German short rows are the way to go. But also if that hole bothers you, try not to worry about it until you've blocked your piece because it really does improve significantly with blocking. Yeah. And another thing that I just wanted to mention too, because I was looking at mine, which I haven't woven in my ends yet, actually. Um, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, 
da, 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 da. I'm going to change the camera. But um, so I haven't woven in my ends yet, and I use the racks and turns. And I also don't really see a hole. You have to really kind of like stretch it to see <laughs> that. But this happens to be the beginning of the way you started your project and is where you would have that um, your cast on um, uh, what's your it? end to weave in. Your yeah, end to weave in. So what you also could do is just roll on up and just cinch it in. Yes, um, so that it's is really a easy great to cover. Option. Yeah, I, I just personally feel like because I yeah. know from experience that blocking almost always gets rid of that hole. Don't do anything uh, yeah. drastic at first. If you first finish and it's really bothering you, just wait, block it first. If mm -hmm. after blocking, you're still not happy with it, then go ahead and um, use your tail to close it up. All right, I'm going to switch back to my camera. Um, Jaja, if you want to join me up here. Um, so we're going to um, check out the questions that you guys have for us that we may have missed while we were chatting. Um, so Jaja, take it away. Ask me a question. I was so involved in what was going on on screen. I haven't had a chance to look at them yet. So let's see. Did you use long tail cast on? And if yes, how did you measure the length before casting on? This is something we got a question. We got a question about. We really went into depth about this in the last minute long, but it's always great to talk about. It um, is because it's a question everybody has, and it's a good mm -hmm. question, and it's so frustrating to run out of yarn. So yes, I did use a long tail cast on for all of my bandana cowls. Mm -hmm. I'm a pretty big fan of the long tail cast on. Um, I see somebody was just asking about the cable cast on, and you know, obviously the big advantage of the cable cast on is you don't have to estimate your tail. Um, so, I mean, just real quick to say, like, the reason why you might prefer a long tail cast on over a cable cast on is a long tail cast on is elastic. It's stretchy. It has like, you know, this is my edge right here. You can see it has a lot of give and movement. Um, I don't have a sample of a cable cast on, but a cable cast on doesn't have quite the same give and movement. Somebody said they did it and it worked out fine. And I agree for this particular pattern, it's probably, you could get away with a cable cast on. You, you could probably still get it on over your head, uh, depending on you know the size of your head, the size of the cowl you've made. But in terms of how to actually estimate how much you need, I'm just gonna grab some yarn here and show you my personal favorite method. Um, there are, you'll find lots of methods out there. Um, I would say one of the more common ones is uh, to say one inch per stitch. So if this is 89 mm -hmm. stitches, some people will do it can measure out 89 inches and use that. It's not the most accurate, um, but it does the trick. Most needle sizes, you're not going to end up with like too short of a tail, which is really more of a problem than too long of a tail. Um, a little bit quicker method, but still not the most accurate is to wrap your yarn around your needle the same number of times as stitches you're gonna cast on. So you would wrap your yarn around your needle 89 times, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, 89 times, take that off. And that's the length of tail you need to cast on. But you have to make sure that you use that as the back tail when you're casting on, if that makes sense. Because if you think about the long tail cast on, let me actually switch back to uh, my document camera so I can demonstrate this real quick. So when you're casting on, um, the front tail just makes a knot while the back tail actually wraps around the needle. So if you're using the method of wrapping around the needle to measure your tail, you have to make sure that tail is the back tail or the tail over your index finger. Otherwise, it just doesn't work <laughs> at all. Um, but then my actual most favorite method for estimating tail is to first start with just a guess. I just start with, I don't know, six to 10 inches or so. And I cast on 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Then I unravel those 10 stitches, but when I do, I hold on to my tail immediately below the last stitch that I cast on, and I hold on to the first stitch that I cast on when I slide it off the needle. So I hold on to those and unravel it. And this is now 
exactly enough yarn to cast on 10 stitches. So I can then use that tail to multiply out how much I need. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on until I get to, in this case, 89 or, you know, 90-ish. Um, and then that's exactly the number, the amount of yarn you need to cast on those 89 stitches. So this is, uh, I think, the most accurate method. Um, it's my, it's my favorite method. And it, it really yeah. doesn't take too long, you know, even compared to the method of wrapping around the needle. Um, and it works well. I, most of the time ends up correctly every once in a while, not, but most of the time. <laughs> yeah. And I have a formula I like to use, which I talked about last time, but I don't have it handy right now. So maybe I'll talk about that right. next time if I can find it. Right. Um, tied into the long tail cast on, um, for the length of the tail before casting on, before the pattern casting on, because the pattern will use the whole skein, I want to be sure how much, okay, let's rephrase this. Basically, they want to know how much of a tail to leave. Um, I know that's a simple question, but we get it a lot. Um, I personally like to do about six to eight inches. It's the kind of thing where I like to have no more than 10. If I have 10 inches, I'm going to restart that cast on. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't worry too much about what, um, running out of yarn because of the tail. But again, 10 inches, I think is too much. It's worth restarting the cast on. For right. That. If, if you've done your gauge swatch and you're confident in the accuracy of your gauge, um, it shouldn't be a matter of inches, right? Like you're, it's yeah. not going to be that tight on yeah. your, um, your uh, yarn usage. I want to say I had probably four or five yards left over. Does that sound about right for what you had left over from yours, Jaja? Well, I actually wanted to show mine because one of the other questions oh, about, good. wait, you said yarn chicken with this project. How much yarn did y'all end up with? So as someone that didn't do her gauge swatch, I left my tail so you guys could see how much. So I took out, because I was getting nervous, I took out one of the, um, at the end, when you're doing the decreases after the short rows for the neck, we'll do it this way. You're working between decreases and regular stockinette stitch. I just took out one round of the simple stockinette stitch, um, the, just a knit round. And um, this is how much I had left when I cast it on. Let me go on. So I left about this much of a tail. So that was acceptable to me. And when I took out that one, I had about this much left. That is yarn chicken. <laughs> that is, yeah, <laughs> super yarn chicken. <laughs> so, but I had enough to finish it and it like wears really well. Yeah, I would say I probably had between three and five yards left over. It That is still tight. That is much closer yeah. of yarn chicken than I personally like to play on a regular oh, basis. Yeah. <laughs> um, but as long as you've done your gauge swatch, you know, a oh, four to, to yeah. six inch um, tail at the beginning should be totally fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jaja's going to put hers on. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I was just going to take off headphones real quick. Oh, I can, I can put one of mine on too. <laughs> Easily goes over the head, very stretchy. Um, I can't hear anything in that moment. I feel like I'm just lost it. Um, so it's very stretchy. It's pretty generous. Um, it comes up about to the chin and it's not, I can pull it up a little higher, but it's not gonna stay there. Very comfortable. Um, you can see just the back. It's yeah, it is very it comfy. Hits. I will say, I actually am not getting to keep this one. Um, my oldest son saw it and said, that's mine. And I said, all right, that's fine. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> I may not be wearing this particular one again. <laughs> yeah, no, I love this color. But also, I think my sister claimed this one. I was just, oh, that's a nice <laughs> plum. I'm like, you, you, you want it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely a compliment when they, uh, like our projects so much that they take them from us <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we love them enough right. to offer it yes all right uh next question um this is a modification one so we'll save it we'll save the modification ones i think for next time so let's see um how we choose yarns by slouchiness if i want to make something that's less slouchy how can i choose a yarn um when we we're talking at the beginning about you know the limpness of the cotton yarns. What we were talking about is see how this can really like hold up and it keeps its figure. It's pretty standard. Yeah, I feel like it, stay, it stays cotton, up on its own pretty well. Yes, like if you're cold, exactly. it's going to stay up around your neck. Those cottons, like especially the tulip cotton, I think they're going to really like just be like this, slash <laughs> down and stay sort of open, <laughs> which, you know, is totally like a design choice. Like, yeah, 
It's great Absolutely. for like, warmer this climates. Is, this is great. There's also appeal in having something that slouches down. Another fiber, which um, unfortunately we don't have a worsted weight alpaca that would work, but Alpaca is another fiber that's very, has much more drape, a lot less body than wool. Um, so that would be an interesting um, option. Somebody asked, can you pull it up on your nose? Oh, you can. I feel like, yeah, if you you're can. a runner. Yeah. <laughs> but you might want to, oh, you know what you could do? Sorry. This could be modifications, but I'll look into this next time. Like if you could fold it over and just include like a little scrunchie, like an I cord and just pull mm. it back keep it in place oh yeah like have yeah. a little eye cord around the top so you could tighten yes. it a little bit that would be an interesting I like this um, I like this addition <laughs> yes oh we, we got we got I'm more design plans down. there we go We're another right. one make a note <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah um why can't I just stop knitting and turn without wrapping I never understood the point I do wrap it but why it's a good one very good one. Um, I wish I had a sample, but basically what happens is you'll get a hole. Um, and this is actually, I always think it's interesting. It's such a common beginner mistake. Um, when we were all first knitting, I know we have all at some point been knitting, put our knitting down and picked it up and gone the wrong direction. And that is essentially a short row just without doing a wrap and turn or German short row. But, you know, in essence, that is a short row. And if you remember doing that when you were a beginning knitter, you probably noticed because it left a hole in your knitting. Mm -hmm. And similarly, if you were to do this with turning around without doing the wrap and turn, without doing the steps to make it a German short row, you would end up with holes all along the edges. Um, the only exception is uh, if your pattern is entirely in garter stitch, you can get away without doing the wrap and turn or the German short row. For instance, our um, garter ear flap, which would be an adorable companion to a bandana cowl, just saying, um, and is written for the same weight of yarn, just saying. Um, the garter ear flap, the ear flaps are shaped with short rows and there are no wrap and turns. There are no German short rows. You just turn around and go the other direction. But since they're in garter stitch, you don't see any holes. The garter stitch kind of scrunches down and hides those holes for you. And this isn't a question, but something I just thought about because I didn't understand the purpose of short rows in general when I first started knitting and I wanted to talk about it. I'm going to take it off so you can see it again. Um, but just the construction of this cow is really fascinating because it starts in the round. You've got a little circle, you've got a little tooth going on. And then you're knitting those partial rows back and forth. And you don't see a triangle shape actually and actually form until the very end of those short rows. So to give you an idea of just kind of backwards, because it's like, how do, how do we even get to this point? So this is the back. This is the point that we began and we joined in the very round. And when you first start, it's actually kind of like this, the top where it's just, let me go back into focus, just a singular, just circle. Um, but what happens as you're, I think you start at the tip after these decreases and you're doing the stocking net, you're doing the short rows and you're just kind of going back and forth between here. What I like to do, because one more, and it's one more place. stitch each time, which I think yes. is also interesting to remember. You're always doing like, well, two more mm -hmm. technically, but two more stitches on each row. So you're moving out and out and out. Exactly. And it doesn't mention in the pattern, but I like, since I like the wrap and turns to actually put a stitch marker there so I can clearly see where it was. And what happens as you spread further out, you eventually get to this point and you get all the way up here. So all of this to here were the short rows and it starts flat and becomes this triangle. And it's just really fascinating to me. The rest of it is in the round. And that's why you're doing the short rows. Again, it wasn't asked, but I just thought that's interesting and why you're doing it. It's really, really, I like the construction. So I just thought that was really cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. But I think let's just double check. Oh, we have some new questions because I was I just added that one in there because we didn't have as many questions as I thought. Uh, will you be showing how to make the German short row next video or comparison to the other methods? Will we be going over short rows next time? Um, um, we actually were not planning on it, but certainly if that's something that you would like, we can. Um, mm -hmm. We have two tutorials. We already have video tutorials for both the wrap and turn short rows and the German short rows um, mm -hmm. that are extremely thorough. 
but we can do it again. (laughs) (laughs) We, um, absolutely. So please. Yeah. Anytime you have a suggestion, something you'd like to see in these videos, something that you'd even like to see as a tutorial, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know, um, whether that's, you know, uh, emailing us at knit along at Pearl Soho or, um, customer service at Pearl Soho. We are, we love your suggestions. We want you to help us, you know, help you be successful in the cowl. So absolutely. Um, Mm -hmm. we can, plan to do a side-by-side for that. (laughs) Yeah. And we, we did that actually during the uh, lightweight raglan pullover. I believe I'd made a swatch and had German short rows on one side and uh, rapid and turns on the other side. So you could get a really close side-by-side look at the two, um, the two uh, methods to see if you could spot a difference. And we would be absolutely happy to do that again. Okay. That sounds good. Um, I yeah. just saw something that Ashley said that was really, I really like, like, like this. It said, I really like thinking about short roads as switchbacks while walk, while hiking a mountain. Feels like it takes forever and not making progress, but ends with a beautiful finish slash summit. And Absolutely. I do agree. <laughs> yes. Especially for the triangle at the end, you reach that summit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and someone asked to be just um, about the short rows again that, oh, so this is not, so doing the short rows, we are not working in the round. Yes, that's why they're called short rows. I didn't make that connection until later. They're rows, not rounds, um, and they're partial rows. Um, so you're knitting flat while you're doing um, all of the short rows, whether you're doing wraps and turns or German. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this section of the cowl, the point, is actually knit flat, and then this part up here that's around your neck is knit in the round. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I saw somebody just ask, should you swatch in the round? It's up to you. Um, we did we did talk about this a little bit earlier. Since you do both, if you wanted to be the most accurate uh, and conscientious knitter you could be, you could swatch both in the round and flat. Um, I personally only swatched flat, um, but it's really up to you. I think if you're talking about the fit of the cowl, swatching in the round may actually be a little more important because that's the section that's really going around your neck, right? So that's where you might need a more accurate fit compared to the triangle, which is just a triangle that hangs out and looks cute. Um, (laughs) So I suppose swatching in the round would probably be a little more accurate to the overall fit of the cowl than swatching flat. Um, But personally, I swatched flat because it is such a small project and fit is not as essential for an accessory like a cowl as it would be for something like a sweater and And yes we do have a tutorial for swatching in the round Gianna we'll get that in the chat for you in just a moment we have one more question would adding beads be a possibility and a modification or would that impact impact the drape too much again another great question really interesting question so um the most interesting part of that question is you would have to have huge beads yeah. to, get them, <laughs> to get them on this yarn. Um, because uh, let's see, I'm going to hold up um, a strand of uh, plenty. So most often when you're um, knitting with beads, at least in my experience knitting with beads, you're using like fingering or lace weight yarn uh, and you use uh, eight, zero delica need beads. I forget the exact mm. size of beads. It's been quite some time, but you know, they're um, a little larger than seed beads and they fit nicely on a fingering weight or lace weight yarn with this worsted bulky yarn. You're going to have to use quite large beads, which will be heavy. Yeah. Um, however, I think it would be beautiful, especially in the point to have like a little pattern of beads mm. sort of sparkling in the front and it would weigh it down. But if you're sticking with something just in the point in this section right here, that's fine. It can be weighed down. That's not an issue. Um, if you were to do something, you know, beaded overall, it's going to affect your gauge. It is going to affect the drape of the yarn. So you're going to have to do your swatch with the beads. Um, and just keep that in mind that you're going to have a much heavier cowl if you have the beads throughout but I think it would be so beautiful and so interesting to do like a little beaded design in the center yeah, of the triangle if you're doing like a snowflake or something for the oh winter, that for really winter cute. oh yeah. like a little sparkly snow oh. yeah just a sparkly just snowfall. you could also you could also um I haven't actually done this you can absolutely bead after the fact if you wanted to use yeah. smaller beads you know plan out your design and use like a a beading thread or even a sewing, I'm not sure if sewing thread would stand up to the weight of the beads, but um, you could do like some bead embroidery on the surface of the cowl afterwards and then get away with using some thin, some smaller beads 
that would be not so heavy and would mm-hmm. still be really pretty. Yeah. That and would be very really, interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the lag. I'm sorry. <laughs> but another interesting and I feel like easier modification too, if you want to add a little pizzazz, which I wanted to try at some point, is a tassel. A tassel is really easy to add on. You could just put it at the point. It wouldn't weigh it down too much, but if you just wanted a little something there. Yeah, I saw just a couple questions. We want to leave some time for people to join us and share their cows. So I'm going to run through just a couple more questions I happen to see in chat, in chat, in chat, in chat. Uh, Somebody asked if you can use a German twisted cast on. I love a German twisted cast on. It would work really well. Yes, please do that. Uh, It would be, it's actually stretchier. It's a little more work than you need to do, but it would work great. That would be a wonderful um, option. Um, Somebody else just asked, are the first five rounds knit back and forth? They are not, they are knit in the round. So you will notice in the pattern, in order to get the garter stitch edging, normally when you think garter stitch, you think knitting every row. That's only if you're working flat since the beginning of the round is, or the beginning of the cowl is done in the round. You're going to be alternating knit and purl rounds, not rows, uh, to do that garter stitch edge. And um, um, I really like Anne's comment about the uh, knitting needles, if you want to talk about that. Let's the, see. The one that says, I think it might be good to mention that while you're knitting rows, you're continuing to use your round needles. I think some folks might think you need to change needles. Absolutely that is good correct. Point. Yes, you're going to stay on your circular 16 inch needles or magic loop. That's what you choose to do for the entire cowl. So even though you're on circular needles, you are going to turn around when you're doing those short rows, you're going to turn around to the wrong side of your work and purl back, but you're still on the circular needles. You are not changing your needles um, throughout the cowl. That is a very good point. Um, And also I saw two questions so far. Um, The next Zoom and Knit session will be on November 5th. Um, and we're going to really focus on modifications. We have some really fun things planned. I will absolutely do a uh, demonstration side by side of German short row and wrap and turn short rows. Um, some other things we have planned are more yarn options with combining different yarns, yes. which we're kind of really we're excited testing. about. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to demonstrate um, duplicate stitch. We've had so much attention, that adorable one with the B. If you're on Instagram, um, the owner of the company, Joelle Hoverson, that B on that cowl is for her dog, Bryn, who is a standard poodle. And she has a picture on Instagram of Bryn wearing her cowl with the embroidered B on it. And it's like one of the cutest things I've ever seen in my life. It's adorable. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I think, was that the one that Gianna wore in the, in the photo? Yes. Gianna, who's here, was one of our models wearing the um, duplicate stitch cowl, the monogrammed cowl. <laughs> um, it was adorable on you too, Gianna. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so I think we've gotten through most of the questions. If we didn't get to your question, please do, um, you know, reach out, email us. Uh, message us on Instagram. We will absolutely answer your questions. We will make sure you have all the information you need, but we do want to leave some time for people who want to um, come on screen and share with us. So um, if you would like to, uh, please uh, raise your hand in um, Zoom. Gianna is going to put the instructions for um, how to raise your hand if you're not sure how, Um, and then we'll invite anybody up who would like to come chat with us. All right, we already have one. We have. All right. <laughs> Hi, Kel. Welcome. Hi. I just I was the one that said I wanted to try stripes all the way through. Oh, so brave. Chatting. Um, I I it works. It's it's actually quite easy, and I use the Japanese short row method for it. And mm. as you can see, it's just lovely. So it looks that's really another, good. Beautiful. Yeah. So awesome. if you were to do stripes, I would highly recommend the Japanese short rows. Mm, so lovely we do not have a tutorial just in case anybody asks we don't have a tutorial for Japanese short rows I have done them they are fun and easy um there should be a lot of tutorials for how to do it on YouTube and that's really bravo for being brave and just going for it that's awesome it looks really great <laughs> what, what so colors fast, are you using oh my gosh I think yeah, I during the call time if it didn't work but <laughs> so fast my gosh yes <laughs> Fantastic. And um, yeah, thank you, Kel. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to ask real quick, what colors are those? Oh, um, it is, know? let's see, gray pearl. Okay. And 
yellow green or whatever they're the, oh, oh the golden, golden green, green. Yeah. Golden yeah. Green. yeah nice Ooh, beautiful the gray Thank pearl you. And golden green and, <laughs> and i have uh, two adult children one in alaska and one in washington state so one will get the green and the gray and the other will get the gray and the green so oh. <laughs> very sweet I love that and that yeah that's a beautiful color combination thank you for Fantastic. sharing thank you thank I gotta you. run okay thanks <laughs> okay next up we have one second adding spotlight All welcome right. Terry hi I am using the um I'm also using gray pearl um, mm. I'm still I, trying I to have gray pearl right, right here waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I want to do the um, uh, transitional stripe or if I'm going to do the color block. I also have, mm. I let's see, what do I have? I have fresh figs. So whatever it ends up, it's going to be those two colors. <laughs> Lovely. I just, I just finished the point and I'm just, I'm at that point where i'm ready to start doing the short rows so i was kind of hoping that we you would do a demonstration of the short rows so oh. i know which one i might want to try but oh well we will do I'll one next time shot. give it a shot and you know also i'm just going to plug real quick we do offer free one-on-one -on -one zoom health yes. sessions so just saying like you can go on our website and it's basically a free product on our website you mm -hmm. can reserve a time and meet with a member of the customer service team Terry, anybody oh. here, if you want to do yeah. like a real quick in-depth, uh, like deep dive with one of us into how to do those short rows, we would love to discuss that with you. Yeah. And okay. Jenna, if you could put a chat, um, a link in the chat for the um, the one-on-one -on -one project help, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, yes. that's great. I know the gray pearl is one of my favorite colors. I'm glad you like it too. <laughs> yes. But yeah, we'd love to go over that one at a time with you. So feel free to sign up for that. We can do that. Yeah. All right, thanks, Terry. Thank you for sharing with us. Next up, we have Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Hi. Um, I am making at least two, which I'm very excited about. One in the blue pansy and then one in the fresh fig as well. Mm. Um, I'm excited to try the germ German short rows. I've never done that before. So I'm gonna do one in the wrap and turn that I know and then one in the German to try it out. Um, That's exactly what I did. I think <laughs> you'll like them. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm so pumped to learn something new. Um, and I wanted to share who I'm making them for as well, which is um, a very dear college friend of mine who her and a good friend of hers are currently paddling the Mississippi from source to summit or source to sea. So oh they have already <laughs> 500 miles and it's getting cold. They're in Minnesota. So I'm making one for each of these two impressive, brave ladies as they are paddling all along the Mississippi and send it in one of their restock boxes <laughs> along with some snacks and things. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that would be very package. welcome. <laughs> yeah, that's so nice. Awesome. Um, I will keep the group updated on their travels as we do. Yes, this. please do. Oh, you, you should, you should, these are going to be well-traveled cowls. I think you need yeah. some like progress photos of the cowls as they move across the country. That's so cool. That's a great <laughs> idea. That's a great idea. My really good friend today is also her 40th birthday. So I thought it was a Aww. great day to like kick off the knitting for her. So it all came Wonderful. together. Lovely. That's so sweet. Oh, how lovely. Well, thank you, Ashley. We're so glad that you're knitting for such a fun cause with us. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's great. Thanks so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have Jane. Hi, Jane. Oh, we can't hear you yet. I think you have to unmute still. Can you hear me? Yes, yes now, now we, we can, can hear you. So I didn't have my plenty yarn yet, but I needed a little palette cleanser while I figured out what to do with my other sweater. Mm -hmm. So I also am going to a Ukraine party, but then I realized I did it the wrong way. So I have to make another one. Oh, oh I, I mean, I think I think the message will still come across, but yeah, that's that's really sweet. What a great idea for the color blocking. Mm -hmm. And 
So I've been knitting while we've been, while I've been listening to you. So this is how much progress I've made. I cast on when your meeting started. Wow. So awesome. <laughs> I'm doing the German short rows. I actually find them quicker because when I purl flat, I actually just knit backwards. So when I do the German short rows, I don't actually have to drop my needles or do anything. I can just, mm -hmm. you know, switch the loop back and just turn it over and keep knitting the other direction which wow. is why i like the german short rows better um That's also cool. when do wrap and turn i actually have to use the markers or forget which stitch i wrapped and and definitely i don't like that this way i don't have to use the wrappers i just look for the double stitch and i know yeah awesome so, it's a lot more reliable <laughs> Yeah, those, those are both great, great points. I know I find German short rows a little easier to spot than the wrap and turns, although we do have yeah. some tips for that that we will share next time. So I did wrap and turns for years. And when I discovered the ger German short rows, I was like, oh my God. Like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, worth trying both of them, but I personally like the German short rows. Yeah. Anyway, I, I'm I, really looking forward to getting my plenty yarn, especially after hearing how squishy and wonderful it yeah. is. <laughs> oh, I hope you like it. You'll have to let us know what you think. We're we're big fans, but we might be biased. <laughs> Keep an eye out next time. I want to see. <laughs> this is the sweater. It's your um, everyday oh. sweater and linen quill and tussock. And the reason I had to have a uh, a break is that I don't actually have enough yarn to make full length sleeves. Oh. So oh, no. I probably could do short sleeves, but I was trying to decide if I should order more yarn or if I should. Anyway, I had to order the plenty anyway, so I just ordered more yarn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, well, we're thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. We're glad we're glad you'll finish your sweater. We're glad you we're, you'll get your plant your plenty. Um, but yeah, we'll check in with you next time and see see what you think about plenty. <laughs> Can't wait to get it. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Jane. <laughs> I'm very excited because I happen to see some certain someone hands raised. I Hi, know. Lizzie. Right. <laughs> Hi, Lizzie. So um, you probably all don't know. Lizzie actually works in our warehouse. Hi, Lizzie. Hi. I'm in the warehouse now. <laughs> oh, are you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in one of the offices. Here's my towel. There you go. All three. Awesome. <laughs> I can do an outline and then stripes, but I can't Ooh. decide which one to do. Ooh. An outline well, I mean, you're going to have enough yarn to do three, so I think you have to do all three variations. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I think I might start with yeah. this one. Start with a dark the outline. Yeah. And then the lighter. And I was thinking I might do thick and thin stripes, so like two rows, four rows. Ooh, I I, I, that sounds that. exciting. I like it. It's so, ambitious. So you may not know, <laughs> Lizzie, Lizzie is all about adding color. She also did our lightweight raglan pullover. Oh, and she's wearing ah! it. So this is, <laughs> <laughs> so this is Lizzie's amazing color blocked lightweight raglan pullover that she made during our last <laughs> knit along. Um, and I love that they're similar colors. Like I can see the same color theme that must be your favorite colors <laughs> <laughs> I, I think almost everything i knit is green and something else red and green is my favorite color combination it's not like christmas it's like a garden with red flowers and green foliage <laughs> oh that is very sweet <laughs> that's my motto but yes i think everything lately has been yes very similar i'll be knitting something i'm knitting the stephen west mystery knit along oh and it, these two colors <laughs> <laughs> well, everything will match hopefully yeah what <laughs> when you get cold if you ever get cold in california at our warehouse you can wear head to toe all of your knits in greens exactly. and turquoises that'll be so fun exactly that's the plan <laughs> <laughs> oh i love oh, it well i'm so glad you took time to call in from our actual warehouse oh thanks yeah. yes calling in from pearl hq yeah <laughs> i love that thank you awesome right. thanks lizzie uh -huh. we'll see you later we'll see talk you later. to you tomorrow <laughs> yeah right <laughs> next up we have oops just there we go laura all right welcome laura 
Am I unmuted? Yes, yes we can hear Sorry, you. <laughs> my, my screen is reflecting badly in my glasses. I think I have the same color you made, Jaja. Oh yes, the I think the the right plum or yes, the yes. dark one. Yes. So I started it this afternoon. I wow. Do the, I do have the hole, but I think I'll use your tip from my yes, just like my long that tail. extra thing. Perfect. And then to plug your other yarns. Ooh. <laughs> I'm making a crocheted sweater with the linen and quill worsted. It's fabulous. Oh my goodness. Ooh, lovely. Is it the green turquoise or the high tide maybe? Oh yes. The like rich teal. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I, I did. I did the <laughs> linen quill um, sweater cap, um, knit along also, but. Oh, you did. Nice. That, I like to crochet also and that pattern needed a yarn that was the same weight as the linen quill worsted. And it's, it was made with a tweedy yarn and it looks great. Perfect. I love a thicker, yeah. I love linen quill, but for me, it's easier to work with a thicker yarn. So I really am glad we have the linen quill worsted. <laughs> anyway, this is fun. I will be looking yes. for a much less expensive yarn for my six and eight year olds who also yeah. <laughs> I totally understand. But boys, <laughs> six and eight year old boys. So much less expensive oh. yarn for them. <laughs> I know that is, that is my, my 12 year old is the one who claimed this and I'm a little concerned, but you know, We'll, we'll just have to see what happens. <laughs> thank you very much. Don't need to keep All right, everything. Thank you, Laura. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. All, All right. right. I think well, that's I think, everyone. Yeah, that's everybody. Um, and we are also just about at the end of our session here. Um, I am so excited. Uh, I'm even more excited after talking with all of you and, and answering questions. Like I'm totally uh, pumped for this knit along. I think I'm planning on making six or seven i have all these colors i have some pink i have some more blue i have some right plum i have uh i have some purple i have some but yes gray. actually <laughs> i have a, planned. this is i just I am, um, I'm really excited about plenty and I'm excited to make all of these cowls. Um, I do have to look, uh, I have all these picked out for my, uh, my gift list. I'm making various colors for various, uh, members of the family. <laughs> oh man. I'm still waiting to hear back from family and friends. Um, where again, yeah, I have to be a little choosy about how many I can do. I wish I could do that many, but I had a really good time. Just, I like to sneakily send people a link to plenty and just say, hypothetically, if I were to make something for you, what's your favorite color? And I was really surprised by some of the responses. Like I thought I knew my sisters. It's like, oh, they're, they're pink and red girls. And no, one wants fresh pickle and the other wants river rock. I'm like, I thought I knew you, I am betrayed. So just a heads up, you can maybe want to ask people, you might be surprised at what they say, but you can also do, always surprise them. I'm sure they'll love it anyway. I know. I, I am guessing what I think everyone will like, but I hope I hope I guess we're right. Yeah. Um, and I'm also thinking, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen on Instagram, there are a lot of dog bandana cowls out there. Mm. Uh, quite a few people have been really scaling it down for their dogs and it uh, has inspired me to make one for my cat. I don't know if he'll let me <laughs> put it on him, but I might try it. We'll see. I mean, check in next time. I might have my cat with a cowl. Oh I, no guarantees though. I hope so. <laughs> um, our, and as I mentioned earlier, our next Zoom in it will be on Saturday, November 5th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. You can sign up for it right now. That's already available on our website. Uh, we're going to put a link in the chat. We'll send out a newsletter reminding you with another link to sign up in case you miss the, the link right now. Um, but yeah, so there's that link. Thanks. Thanks, Gianna. Yes, and just so you guys know too, we are of course recording this and we are gonna be uploading it. It usually takes us a little bit to edit it. Um, I would say the best way to know when we post it, because I don't know if we always send out a newsletter of when it's actually posted, is to actually subscribe to our YouTube channel. So Tiana, if you could, perfect. Oh, it was right on cue. Thank you, Gianna. <laughs> you can subscribe yeah. and there'll be a little notification once that goes up. Totally. Um, also, and just to you know, plug in case you aren't excited enough, we have so many fun giveaways planned. Um, there are the grand prizes. I actually haven't mentioned this. Uh, I forgot to mention this at the beginning. Um, just for signing up, uh, you get entered into a giveaway and the grand prize is a thousand dollar Pearl Soho gift card. Um, and we're also giving away a couple um, $500 and $250 gift cards. Um, so just for signing up for the knit along mailing list, you get entered to win those. Um, anytime you send us a picture 
Uh, you can um, tag us on uh, Instagram with the hashtags, hash, or just one hashtag, hashtag Pearl Soho K-A-L, um, or you can upload them to the gallery on our landing page. Um, that will give you another entry to a drawing for these same prizes. And we're also giving away along the way um, lots of kits. Uh, as long as you sign up or submit images, we're going to be about every two to three weeks, we're going to be giving away another kit or some notions or something else fun. So don't forget to show us like we want to see it because we want to see it, but you want to show us because you'll be in a giveaway. <laughs> like Juliana said, you don't even have to, you, well, obviously we want you to finish and we're here for you to make sure you finish, but you don't have to finish. Just Signing up gets you all of this. And I think there's actually a separate set of prizes for those that do finish, right? Right. Well, like and not for the those that finish. It's, there's a it's set of giveaways pictures, for people who right? sign up and then a set of giveaways for people who send us pictures of their cowls in progress gotcha. or finished. Gotcha. Okay. So it counts either way. Multiple people have made a bunch. We're hoping you make a bunch. We're really excited about this. Um, and just like the last knit along, if you have any questions, before, during, afterwards, we can always be contacted at customer service at prosoho.com, knit along at prosoho.com. If you want more in-depth questions, um, we're happy to do the one-on-one -on -one session where, again, it's completely free. You get a little um, Zoom link and it's just one-on-one. -on -one. We take a look in advance. It helps to have 24 hours notice. And then one of us on the customer service team will meet with you. Awesome. Yeah, we. Uh, it's really fun. Like, I don't know. I, 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 love I don't sessions. do I do too. I don't do too many of them anymore, but they are super fun to get to sit down and chat with uh, with somebody and nerd out a little bit about knitting. Um, so thank you all so much for coming and chatting with us today. Uh, I feel like we're all going to be super cozy this winter. I know. I kind of. I'm a little chilly now. <laughs> <laughs> um, it really, it gives us such a thrill to see so many knitters inspired by this classic pattern. I want to say this pattern came out six, 14 years ago. Does that sound right? Is it? Did it? it this is, this is an older pattern and it yeah. is like, it's still so good. Like it's mm -hmm. just, it's, it's classic. It's comfortable. It's easy to wear. It's fun to knit. Um, so we're really enjoying seeing everybody having fun with this pattern again. So thank you all so much for joining the knit along for knitting with us. Um, and as always, please do stay in touch, uh, tag us on Instagram and we hope we'll see you at the next zoom and knit. Yes. All right. Bye everyone. Thanks for coming. <laughs>